My name is Helena Miller-Landau. I'm a Smithsonian scientist at the Tropical Research Institute in Panama. I work in tropical forest ecology, working especially with plants, trying to understand how there can be so many plant species, which in turn, of course, is a big part of the reason why there's so many insect species and so many other animal species in these forests. One of the things I'm most excited about is trying to explain how there can be so many different seed sizes in the same forest. Of the hundreds of tree species here, some of them have seeds that are so small you can barely see them, and other ones have these huge things. Where I work, you've got some seeds that are, that are about that big. So you've got something like six orders of magnitude, a million-fold difference in seed size between the biggest and the smallest seeds in the system. And all these species are staying in the forest. And what's, what's allowing them all to coexist and, and maintain themselves in the forest? So we're changing these forests. And a big question is, what's that going to mean for the species that are there? We've got half a million plant species in the world today. Are we going to have half a million plant species on the planet a century from now? My, my research trying to understand what maintains diversity in plant communities, part of what motivates me is trying to see how will those things change in the future. So, for example, if we have these species, plant species in this community that vary hugely in seed size, and one of the reasons that there's small seeded species around is that there's some animals that come around and eat the big seeds. Um, and then you hunt away those animals and the big seeds don't get eaten and now the big seed seeds win all the spots and kind of take over and push out the small seeded species. Well, gosh, we could lose a lot of species without ever actually going in and cutting down those trees because we've removed an, an animal that, that kind of determines um, who wins and who loses in these forests and helps maintain a, a balance of competitors there. I spent a lot of time growing up uh, playing, in the, playing outside and, and we lived on one of these artificial lakes where they let the water down every winter so that people can repair their docks and, and the part of the lake behind our backyard turned into this big mud puddle basically when that happened and my brother and I would go out and get the crayfish and stick them in an aquarium for the winter and try to save them but of course then the big crayfish would eat the little crayfish and, and so I'm not sure we were actually doing the crayfish any favors. but. Um, but that's where, I, that's where I grew up. So I came to Panama as a graduate student um, some 13 years ago now. Almost everyone who comes to a tropical forest, I think it's just overwhelming. It's green, the trees are so big, there's so many different species out there. I mean, it's, it's amazing, it's wonderful. And a year and a half ago now, I accepted a position at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, which is kind of a dream, basically a dream job for me, because now I'm actually down in Panama, right next to the forest that I'm studying. And, uh, and get a chance to spend more time in them and more easily collect data in them.